<laughs> she hears people walking in the hallways. <laughs> hi, puppy, puppy. She says hi. She's a little snoozy. <laughs> Yeah, Parker probably outside soon. She she hadn't um, really eaten. I didn't. I tried to feed her a small meal before we got in the car, but she wasn't interested, and so she uh, she scarfed a, a meal when we got here. Now I think she's a little a little s snoozy. I just bought some buttons for my babies thanks to you. Oh, that's so exciting! Yay! I'm so excited to uh, to see your journey. Scritches to Parker. Yes, we have to give her some scritches. Yes, I want to give a special hi to Sarah H. Wilkinson, 84, um, because she is the one who had made a comment saying her kids um, had questions for Parker and suggested doing a live. So um, she was the inspiration for this. Um, so I want to uh, thank her specifically for that. Um, someone asked, I saw what's on Parker's collar. And this is a link device. Can you look up here? Good girl. Oh, that's my phone number. Let's not have that. Um, that's a link device. Um, and um, it has GPS on it. And um, it also is like an activity tracker, like a Fitbit. Um, and it also can emit like a tone. Um, it has a vibrate function I haven't used. She keeps showing my phone number, so I'm trying not to show that part of it. <laughs> Um, but she, um, it'll emit like a tone. And so like, if she's far away, uh, um, I can use an app on my phone to make it beep and she hears it and she knows that's a recall. Um, and so she, she comes when I do that. So it's, it's got, it's a nice training tool, like kind of like a clicker. Um, but instead of her having to be close enough to hear it, it's right by her, her head. So it's a company there, um, uh, Instagram, I think I can put it in the chat, is Hello Link. Um, and um, we um, became kind of a link partner recently. And so we've been using it for a few weeks. Um, we really like it. Um, and I'll give you a little a little bit of a, a, a spoiler alert, but there's going to be a giveaway that we're going to be doing of one of them later this week. She does totally know I'm talking about her. She's being a total ham um, about it. Yeah, baby. Oh, we love everyone. I it like brings me such joy that um that people get so much as much joy, you know, as I do out of her. Um and that I get to share her with everyone. Um Hannah says hi Parker. Hi Hannah. Um so feel free to drop any question. Oh, that's the sound of the air conditioning going on. Parker, I'm going to have to come on the other side of you so that my phone number stops showing constantly. <laughs> Hello. Yes, we'll come on this side. That's better. That's better. Um, so, yeah, feel free to drop any questions in the chat. And i um, happy to answer about the buttons, about Parker, um, whatever questions people have. Uh, yeah. Feel free to throw them in the chat. She's so pretty. I think so too. I think she's very pretty. Um, <laughs> I think she knows she's a good a, a looker. Um, all right. What is the first button I recommend to teach? Um, so I I would make two recommendations. One is that. Um, I mean, it's up to you. Some people start with one button. We started with six all at once. I would recommend starting with a few, um, you know, maybe not necessarily six, but, um, you know, anywhere between two and six, I would say, um, because then they get kind of the concept that this is like a communication as opposed to all buttons mean this. Um, and I would recommend, you know, thinking about the words that you like have to spell <laughs> <laughs> um, because your dog gets super excited about them. Um, and so that's really going to depend on your dog or cat or whoever, you know, whatever your learner is. Um, so for Parker, I like, she loves to play. So I knew that play should be one of her first words. 
she's got her chew there. Um, and that all done would be useful. So thinking about pairings. So like, you know, play and all done. Um, outside, um, you know, is a good one. Um, or potty or something like that. Um, I'm trying to think. The six that we started with were um, food, water, outside, play, all done, and oh, we started with a button for toy, which I later changed to like toy specific buttons. So she has like a stick button and a chew button and all that stuff instead of just like a generic toy button. So really think about, oh, she's having some water. She's hydrating. Lexi would be proud. Um, so really think about the buttons or, or I'm sorry, the words that your dog gets most excited about um, and start with those because those are going to be the words that they already know the meaning. And so then it's just about figuring out the button itself. Oh, someone asked what buttons I started with. So those are the ones that I, that I started with. Um, food, water, outside, play, all done, and toy, which again, I later switched for um, specific toy ones. How old is Parker and where did you start? Oh, she's looking for more food in her puzzle. I can give you some more food in your puzzle. You want some more food? She's like, I didn't eat all day. Give me a second dinner. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna give you a little bit more. Um, Parker is, um, a year and a half. <laughs> She's like, just that. Um, and we started when she was six months old. She's actually about to have her one year button anniversary. Um, it'll be on July 3rd. It's either the second or the third. Um, there you go, baby. I gave her treats before. And so I think she sort of is hoping that I'll, I'll give her some treats instead of just the regular food. <laughs> but yeah, she's about to have her one year button anniversary. Um, so she's been using the buttons for almost a year. We are not back home. We are at um, the hotel we're staying at, at the halfway point. Um, so we will be back home tomorrow. So we've got her travel board with us. Um, which we used for the first time on this trip. Yeah. Okay, from James. He's five and he wants to know her favorite toys and do you name her toys on the buttons? Yes, James, I do. So she, I don't have the toy specific ones here on the travel board, but she does. She has a chew button for chews like this um she has a squeaker button for she's like why are you messing with my toys for squeakers so i brought a squeaker you can see she's kind of tried to take its eye out um for squeakers so anything that makes a squeaky noise this one makes a really weird one <laughs> um she has a tug um button and then she has stick which is her flirt pole um and she also has a ball um, button. Um, and her favorite toys, I think for playing inside, um, the stick, the flirt pole is her favorite, though she does really like a squeaker too. And then for outside, um, fetch, I'm like cautious about saying it. She's looking at me, um, is, is her favorite. She gets super amped up about that. So she loves to play fetch in the backyard. Um, that's that's probably her absolute favorite game. How long did it take for Parker to start understanding the button concept? So her, I, I always preface this by saying Parker is not average. <laughs> um, most most learners will take a, a while and some need to um, need to do button training, um, not button training, uh, target training. Um, to learn how to press the button in the first place. And um, Waffle the Super Mutt um, has a video in their guide on their page that's great for target training. I don't have a target training video because I never did it. Um, 
Parker had learned to um, hit bells to to ask to go outside um, to potty originally. Um, and so she did kind of, I guess, do some target training for that. But in terms of the buttons, she just really saw me do it once um, and figured out that she could press them. So again, I will preface this by saying she is not normal. She pressed her first button within like 30 seconds of me putting them down. <laughs> I was literally putting the box that they came in in the closet and I heard all done from the other room. Um, by the end of the first afternoon that I had them down, she had pressed all of them. Now she didn't know what they all meant and what they did, but she figured it out pretty quickly because she would press them and see what different things happened. And then she figured out, okay, this is a communication tool. Um, you want more food? Yeah. Let's see, give you another. Oh, you know what I can give you? Do you want a bully stick? Where are you? There you are. I'm like rummaging around in a bag with one hand. Here we go. You want one of these? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so she figured it out pretty, pretty quickly. Um, and then it was just about figuring out, she keeps moving, so I have to keep switching sides. So I'm not sharing my phone number again with the entire world. Um, <laughs> uh, she figured it out pretty quickly. You know, on average, I would say most learners take, um, you know, a couple of weeks to a couple of months. But there are, I know, um, for example, like one year up Frank um, was afraid of the buttons and took about six months before he really was comfortable with them. And they tried, you know, different types of buttons and things like that. Um, and now he's totally chatty. So um, it, it really depends. You know, some pick up on it really quickly and some need more time um, to figure out the concept and, and some are chattier than others. Um, so it really depends, but um, I always just encourage people to, you know, just keep modeling, um, you know, pressing the buttons and they'll, um, you know, and, and they figure it out. And some of them, you know, uh, some dogs or, or, or cats just aren't interested. I mean, you can see there's a number of kind of multi-pet homes where one animal, one learner is interested and the other one isn't. Um, like if you um, follow uh, Misa Mila, you know, Mila is very interested in the buttons and Shotzi couldn't care less. Um, and so part of it depends um, on, on the animal as well. Yes, the Benabone was the chew she had before, and right now she has a, a bully stick from Pupford. Yeah, Lexi's great. <laughs> yes, I think she was thirsty again from the long car ride. Yeah, we're staying at a, a hotel um, overnight. How many buttons does she know now? She has 80 buttons. Um, I added two new words on this trip. Um, one for visit, because um, it felt kind of appropriate, and one for um, animal, because um, my sibling and sister-in-law have a cat, um, and I wanted to kind of give her a way to talk about non-dog animals as well. Um, I, eventually, I want to add other specific animals, but because she's been talking about animals zooming in the backyard so much. I think she's been using dog just for any non-human animal. And so I wanted to give her the opportunity to be able to distinguish between the two of those. So she will have, have 82 when we get back. And I have um, quite a, f I have a few, I just, I have a, a box of buttons waiting at home for me that I'm very excited about. Um, I'm about to go on another trip, but when I get back in early July, I'm, I've got a, a few more that I want to add for her. Um, yeah. From James, he's five. Does Parker like the bath? Parker tolerates the bath. <laughs> I wouldn't say she likes it. She definitely, um, you know, so she's small enough that I can bathe her in my sink, which is nice because it has like a hose um, attachment. Um, and so she'll stand there. She doesn't like try and jump out. She'll tolerate it, but she definitely does not like it. <laughs> and she always runs her zoomies around afterwards. Um, but she is starting to like water a little bit more, but like, you know, walking in the river and, um, 
I, um, we got a, a kiddie pool, um, at my, my sibling's place and filled it and she got in there. Um, so I think she's, she's okay with water if it's like up to her ankles, <laughs> but that's about it. <laughs> Yeah, she's a little one still. Your babies are 12 and 10. I hope they learn Chihuahuas are smart. Chihuahuas are super smart, and there are a lot of learners that have started, um, like, as senior learners, like, later in life, and they've totally been able to pick it up. Um, so, definitely. I mean, there's no, you know, it's never too late to start. And, I mean, looking at um, kind of what the effect of age um, is on learners is something, as well as breed, um, is something that I know the researchers who are doing a study on all these animals, um, which Parker is a part of, are looking at. My dog gets frustrated when I ask her to use her buttons and smashes them. <laughs> Any tips? Um, I mean, sometimes like you know parker i'm i'm sure people have seen has has button tantrums from time to time <laughs> um and sometimes she's just not interested in using them right like she feels like she's gotten her point across and i should understand and she's not interested in using my language um so you know lately i've been trying to encourage her more to kind of um answer um be more specific in some of her requests and answer some questions um, especially because her with her favorite button being the poop button <laughs> trying to get her to tell me when she actually needs to go to the bathroom versus if she's just trying to go outside um and you know sometimes she'll get more specific and sometimes she just ends up tantruming or just walking away from the buttons and won't engage anymore or barking at me and at those times i'm just sort of like all right you know like that's that's fine i'm asking you to speak in a different language and um you feel you've made yourself clear and so i'm just gonna model um, what I think is going on. So I might say, okay, yes, we can go outside and use the buttons to say that and then take her um, to try and encourage, you know, that series um, of presses as a way to communicate um, as opposed to just incessantly pressing the poop button. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, the other thing that I'll recommend is um, the forum and I'll see if I can type the website in the... Um, chat um but it's called um how they can talk oop stupid autocorrect um how they can talk.org sorry i'm trying to talk and type at the same time which is always a challenge um so that website um has a forum of a bunch of people who <laughs> who i i just saw <laughs> Just such a Wells question and made me laugh. Um, we'll get there. Um, it, it, there's a forum there of a bunch of people who are working with their learners to um, learn how to, you know, to, to use the buttons and um, a very, you know, various people with their own experiences. And so there might be, there's probably someone there who has had the exact same experience as you're having and who can, can help. So I highly encourage you to use that forum too. Can I tell you about the study that she's in? Yes, absolutely. Um, so um, animal cognitive researchers at UC San Diego in California um, are doing a study um, of animals who are um, using these buttons. Uh, and so they're collecting data. So I log um, Parker's button presses. A lot of the animals that you see on social media are all a part of the study. Um, and so they're kind of, you know, first trying to gather evidence um, to kind of support um, what I think a lot of us have um, come to be convinced by, which is that, um, the, that these animals do know what they're saying and they are communicating in this way. Um, and then they're also doing a series of other kind of related studies um, with that to see kind of what the capacity of um, this, this new communication tool is. Um, so they're doing kind of um, 
studies, and these I can't say the specifics of because other people might be um, who are involved in them for the integrity of the study. I can't really talk details, but they're both doing studies where they're kind of sending um, tools for experiments to people's homes. Um, so Parker and I did one of those um, the other weekend. Um, and then they're also doing visits to people's homes. Um, and we actually just got an email a few days ago and we're going to have a visit from some of the researchers at the beginning of July. Um, and so they're going to do some stuff with her and her board in person, um, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, um, it's really exciting to be a part of, you know, new research and, and new science and, and stuff like that. Um, so I'm really excited that we're a part of of it and um I got one of my degrees from UCSD too so I have like a personal um it, it kind of uh, hits a soft spot for me I guess <laughs> how does she feel about traveling um she does not love it <laughs> she really doesn't like the car um and uh so she she gets some um some nice drugs to help her <laughs> some anti-nausea drugs and some anti-anxiety drugs um, to help her kind of tolerate it. But when she gets those drugs, she she just sort of chills out. Um, she sleeps for most of the ride. And when she's out of the car, she's totally fine. Um, so she doesn't love the journey, but she um, she likes when she's there. She likes getting to sniff new things and, and see family and, um, and animal family and things like that, which I feel like is a very relatable sentiment. Like I don't particularly like the travel portion of traveling. I like the being there. <laughs> I like the destination. <laughs> She's gotten a lot better about her traveling. I love her long tail. Yeah. Everything about her is long, <laughs> including her tail. <laughs> Okay. Have I ever tried reaching for the snack? Oh, like if I tried to take her bully stick from her right now? Um, she would let me do it. Um, she's not kind of like food protective. Hey, baby. Can I have this? Thank you. You can have it back. Yeah, see, she doesn't. I mean, I think she doesn't want me to take it from her, but she's not going to do anything. Um, she's not kind of, um, she doesn't resource guard. That's the phrase I was looking for. Hello, hello. Watching Parker makes you very happy. Oh, that makes me happy. <laughs> Does Parker play well with dogs who can't press buttons? Yes. Parker wants to be with friends with every single dog. <laughs> um, and actually has not met another dog who presses buttons, though that's going to change. She is going to be meeting some dogs later this summer um, who press buttons, um, which we're very excited about. Um, but she has yet to. So all of her, all of her friends... Um, currently do not press buttons. Um, how many buttons <laughs> from Bastion and Bruise? How many buttons can Sasha use? Um, Sasha needs a second to remember where they all are on the board, probably more time than Parker does. <laughs> but I think I can use almost all 80. How do I plan to teach her animal and visit this trip? Um, so for visit, I, I've been modeling it um, verbally without the button for a little bit. When my dad came to visit a couple of months ago, I described it as, you know, dad visit soon, um, dad come visit, and then dad visit all done when he left. Dad, um, and so I've been, I chose visit in particular instead of trip um, because I wanted it to function for both when people came to visit us as well as when we went to go visit other people, um, as well as when I go on a trip and she goes to daycare to be boarded. So, you know, Sasha go visit, you know, wherever and Parker go visit daycare. Um, so she knows she's going kind of on a trip to daycare for a bit. Um, so it's modeling just like everything else. Um but, you know, I, I tr thought I'd take the opportunity of the context of us going on this trip um, to be able to to model it in a in a way that was more expansive than just when I go away um, or when someone comes to visit us. And then with animals, she, she I mean, I tell her the names of, of animals all the time. So like kitty and bird, 
E. I guess I add E onto most of them. <laughs> Kitty and Birdie um, and, and Squirrel and things like that. Um, and so I've started now saying, you know, um, you know, that's a kitty animal, dog animal, squirrel animal, um, so that she understands the category of animal. So we'll see. We'll see how long. She used them, both of those buttons on this trip. Um, but, but how much of that was experiment versus, you know, intent kind of remains to be seen. Especially I'll be curious to see how much she uses those buttons once they're back on her big board um, as well. So we'll see. Um, can I please say the brand of Bully Stick again? Yeah, the company is Pupford, um, P-U-P-F-O-R-D. Um, and her, the, her training treats we get from there as well. Um, yeah, the, we've been using their, her, their training treats since I first got her. So um, we're a fan. Isaac um, is 17. Does Parker initiate conversation? Yes. Um, more often than not, she does. Um, occasionally, if I, uh, well, not occasionally, but um, I'll ask her kind of, you know, what she wants, um, you know, and things like that sometimes. But um, frequently, she uses the buttons when she doesn't already have my attention. Um, and so she's the one initiating conversation in that way um, to get my attention. Um because, you know, if she has my attention already, she might use, you know, her body language or, you know, some other um, form of communication um, rather than, you know, going to her buttons. Um, but she often does. Uh, and you can see this, for example, like when she wakes up in the middle of the night. Um, clearly, I'm not initiating that conversation. <laughs> um, she's waking me up by going and, and pressing the buttons. But she it's actually honestly why like, um, in almost all of the videos I'm either at my desk or on the couch is because it's when she doesn't have my attention that she is more inclined um, to go use the buttons, um, unless I directly ask her a question, in which case I'm initiating the conversation. Um, but yeah, she definitely does. Um, one of them already knows how to ring the bell to go out, but it's on the back door. I want the buttons in the bedroom since we were mostly in there. Yeah. So this was similar to me. Um, I had, um, I actually had bells on both our front and back door just because the set of them had to two sets of bells. So <laughs> I put them on both. Um, and, um, and then her buttons are, are in my main living room and she would still sometimes go to the back door to ring the bells when she wanted something, um, after I introduced the buttons and sometimes it was to go outside, but sometimes I think it was because she didn't have a word. And so eventually I phased out the buttons and took it as a sign when she would ring the bell or go to the back door that she was looking for a word she didn't have. Um, and that was a suggestion that was made to me by someone on that How They Can Talk forum um, uh, was saying, like, I took that as an indication that I need to add more words. So that's sort of what I started doing for that. And she doesn't, she hasn't done that in a really long time now. Um, do I remember what words I started with? Yes. Um, the first words we started with were play, all done, food, water, outside and toy. And I later replaced the toy button with um, toy specific buttons. What state do we live in? We live in Michigan. Oh, it's how.theycantalk.org. Thank you, Joelle. <laughs> I'm the worst at remembering actual websites. So Bastion and Bruce posted the correct website address in the chat. how long before she learned basic words I mean she picked up on the, a lot of the words that I started with were words she already knew right she she knew the the meaning of play um she knew the meaning of outside it was just a matter of her realizing oh that's what the word on the button is um and when I press it that thing happens um so she picked it up really quickly um again like she she is not, her timeline, I would say, is not the average at all. Um, but she she picked up, um, I would say, the majority of her six words because they were words she already knew, um, probably within the first week. Um, but again, she was, she was 
kind of very, very quick. Um, and so I also think that, you know, even before you have the buttons, if you're planning on doing the buttons with the, your, your learner, the more you talk to them and model the word associated with the action or object, um, the, the more kind of that connection will already be in place by the time you add the additional factor of the button. Did she wake me up at night talking on the board? Yeah, she does that sometimes. I mean, uh, frequently when she gets out of bed, because she usually sleeps in bed with, with me, um, that'll wake me up. But sometimes she sleeps on the couch. And so then I do wake up usually to either go or poop. <laughs> Those are the two words that typically wake me up in the middle of the night um, if, if she needs to go out. Uh, what kind of collar does she have on? Um, so she has just a, a regular buckle collar from a company called Gray and Hound. You can try and show up people there. Um, and this is from their um, their Pride collection. Um, since it's Pride Month, she's wearing her Pride collar. Um, and then the attachment on it is um, a Link device. Um, the company is called Hello Link. Um, and it has GPS and a, an activity tracker and um, some training tools like a um, tone. Um, so it'll, it, it'll emit a beep if I press um, if I press for it to on an app on my phone. Um, and so I've conditioned her to come get a treat when that happens so we can use it for recall. Um, so she doesn't have to be able to hear my voice or um, even a whistle. I had kind of whistle trained her. Um, now she she can just hear the the beep because it comes along with her because it's on the collar. Yes, we'll see if they talk to each other with the buttons. We've been joking that it's going to be like a roundtable discussion of like four dogs all with their buttons talking to each other, <laughs> which we think would be pretty fun. Um, yes, I will save the live and I will post it to um, probably our YouTube later for anyone who has to leave or who missed the beginning. Another question from Isaac, who is 17. What are the most used buttons or favorite buttons? Um, her most used, but I mean, like poop is definitely one of her most used words. <laughs> um, I, I was looking at the, so the app where I log her presses will allow you to organize them by most often pressed. Um, and currently the top two are go and then poop. <laughs> uh, but also up there are, um, let's see, our play, come, help, squeaker, those are all kind of some of some of her um, most common ones. Um, but yeah, the poop button has been getting a lot of play <laughs> lately. <laughs> Is Perker picky with food, toys, or anything? Um, she, I would say she's like medium picky. Um, she, uh she's more picky about how she gets her food than what her food is. So like if I give her her breakfast in a snuffle mat and she doesn't want a snuffle mat, she wants a puzzle, she won't eat it. And if I, and she'll press puzzle. And if I put it in a puzzle, the same exact food, she'll eat it. Um, so she's a bit of a diva when it comes to that sometimes. Um, though she's been great on our trip. She just, you know, has been eating her meals out of the puzzle every single time. No problem. I brought her snuffle mat, but I, you know, just so I had some variety. Um, and it hasn't been an issue. I haven't even used it. Um, I made her some meals in a topple, like a frozen topple thing at one point. But um, yeah, and then with toys, she she mostly will play with everything. I feel like there was something I had at one point that she's not really interested in, but I can't think of it. She goes through phases. So I try and rotate toys in and out. Um, but she definitely has her favorites for sure. Um, but she's a pretty, she's pretty easygoing. Yeah, her favorite button is definitely poop. Do, do, do. Thanks, I'd love to try this with my dog. How would we start? Where would we look? Love your post. So, um, 
you can start even without the buttons just by kind of modeling um, words and actions um, and objects, you know, and people's names, um, modeling words that you would ideally like to start with um, for your dog. So associating the meaning with the action or object. Um, and I also recommend checking out how dot they can talk dot org. Um, Joelle Bastian and Bruce posted the correct web address because I screwed it up um, in the in the chat. Um, the forum there is really great and has you know sections for people who are new starters with kind of tips of of places to to start. Um, I'd also just check out um, we use Fluent Pet Buttons, so you can check out their website. Um, there's a link in our bio to that. Um, where you can look and kind of learn more about the buttons um, and the system and everything like that there. Um, so those are all really great places um, to look. I also recommend reading Christina Hunger's book, um, How Stella Learned to Talk. She was the first one who really came up with this idea. Um, and while, you know, I recommend going to the forum for, for how things have changed as more people have gotten involved in terms of um, you know, the, the methods of kind of maybe most effectively teaching. Um, I think it's really worthwhile um, to read kind of uh, the story of how this all got started, especially if you're, you know, kind of on the, on the fence. Yeah, so someone says interesting, or Deep Boss Mom says, uh, which is an excellent name. I said it out loud without even realizing what I was saying, but Deep Boss Mom is an amazing <laughs> username. Um, this is something that Christina Hunger talks about in, in her book, which um, led her to start the, thinking about doing this with her, her dog, which was she was dog sitting um, for these dogs. And they had bells and they had been outside and they were still ringing the bells. And so she knew they didn't need to go outside, but she didn't know why they were ringing the bells. And she thought, hey, maybe it's because that's their only form of communication. Um, and it was clear to me pretty early on that Parker was ringing the bells for more reasons than just when she, you know, needed to go potty. Again, for the same reason that that was kind of all, all she had available to her. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think I think that's definitely... Definitely a sign. William is seven. Does Parker have kid friends? Parker does not really have kid friends. Um, she really liked kids until last summer when like an entire YMCA camp ran up to her <laughs> because she used to wave at them when they went by and, you know, they really liked her and they all ran at her once and she got a little freaked out. Um, so she's gotten a little cautious with, with kids, but um, we are going to visit some friends of mine next month um, and they have two kids. So she's going to spend some time um, with a couple of kids. So um, I think she just needs a little more exposure. Um, she doesn't spend a lot of time with kids. A lot of people who who um, I'm friends with in um, back in Michigan don't don't have kids. Um, so she doesn't spend a ton of time with them. Um, but she's she's pretty, you know, if you get a treat in your hand, she's, she's pretty easy to warm up, um, especially if, if they're kids who have, you know, good, um, have, have learned kind of good behavior around animals, like how to, you know, approach an animal and, um, and things like that. So, uh, she needs, she needs some kid friends. So, um, you know, William, I think, um, she'd like to be your friend. Um, from William, does she understand the concept of time? That's such a great question. Um, yes, I think she does, but to what extent, I'm not sure. And that's something I'm really interested in. So when I was first teaching her to be left alone, um, one of the things I really focused on was teaching her the difference between soon and later. So for us, soon is within 30 minutes and later is more than 30 minutes. Um, and so she definitely understands that soon is a shorter period of time and that later is a longer period of time. Um, and, you know, does she know 30 minutes versus not? I mean, I think roughly, um, I think she probably has some sort of concept of, you know, not maybe to the minute, but, you know, uh, of roughly what those those two time frames are. One of the other things that I've been verbally modeling but haven't added to the board yet um, is tomorrow. 
So oftentimes at night, she'll, she'll ask, um, you know, to do something that we're not going to do when it's dark out. And so I'll tell her, you know, we're all done with that today, but we'll do it tomorrow. And she'll often kind of then stop asking for it, but she might ask for it again the next day. Um, so she, she seems to have a concept that tomorrow is, you know, not now and probably, and like maybe is the next day. And I've also added day and night buttons. And so I think she somewhat understands the concept of day and night. Um, but I'm still iffy on how much she understands, you know, the concept of tomorrow um, in reference to day and night. And that's something that I'm really hoping um, maybe some of the scientists can can get at with, with you know, how much do they understand about time um, and conceptions of time? I think it's a really great question, William. Um, will this be the first interaction with different dogs and buttons? For Parker, yes. For all the other dogs that are going to be there, no. Um, they've all met other dogs that have buttons before. Uh, and so there have been dogs that have met other dogs with soundboards. Um, and I think it's super interesting to see how they all react to that and how they'll all react to each other's boards and, and things like that. So it's going to be very interesting for sure. Go live for that round table uh, dog conference, please. Um, I will I will let the others know. Um, we'll, we'll see what we can do for sure. We're definitely gonna be doing a lot of recording uh, that whole that whole week that we're all together. <laughs> yes, everyone wants to see the dog round table conference for sure. The Chatty Lab, hi. Hi Tia, hi Copper. Hi, Shell. Hi, Lexi. Parker was drinking water earlier, and I said that she was doing Lexi proud. Um, Sarah, would it be beneficial to have a button for friend and good so when the talking puppies meet, they can have some of the same words? Interesting. Well, so here's the thing. They definitely do already have some of the same words, but they're not necessarily in the same places on the board. Right. So it's like if you went to somebody else's house and their computer keyboard had all the same letters, but they were in a completely different place. You still wouldn't really know what to do with that or it would take you a minute to learn where they were. So I'm really curious to see how they all react. I've told <laughs> I've told um, uh, uh, Joelle, Bastion and Bruce that um, I'm pretty sure if Parker presses one button on Bastion's board, it's going to be the treat button. And that the second she realizes that he has a treat button, she's going to look at me with like such a look of betrayal that she does not have one. <laughs> so I think that's going to be eye opening for her. Sorry, my phone told me that my battery was dying for a second. Um, will I please show Parker the cartoon Martha Speaks? Sure. I don't think I know that cartoon, but I will totally show it to her for you, William. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think ringing the bell for lots of things. Um, Leslie Bernstein says, my Sadie rings the bell for lots of things, too. is like a sign that they, you know, are using whatever communication they actually have. Four Pits. She is a speech therapist who taught kids alternative communication techniques and adapted it to Stella. Yeah, absolutely. That's Christina Hunger who um, they're talking about. Let's see, Jenny Megumi talks in the pack. I see my mother. Hi, mom. <laughs> What shoe is she snacking on? Um, she is eating a bully stick from Pupford. Cop does need one. Hi from Brazil. Hello, Luana. I have an 11 year old dog that has been deaf for a couple of years. Have you known anyone whose dog used buttons and then went deaf and how that works out? There is someone, and please, someone who might remember better than I am, put it in the chat if you remember. There is someone who is doing the buttons with a deaf dog currently. Um, 
I don't know if they were using the buttons before um, the dog went deaf or not. I think the dog was always deaf, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, and then um, Positive Behaviors, P-A-W-S, has a cat who's blind um, and has adapted Braille, um, basically, for, for the buttons. And so I recommend checking that out because that, I think, is something that could you know, be, be a, adaptive in, in ways for, um, potentially for a dog who is deaf as well, um, to learn kind of the tactility. Um, but there's definitely someone who is doing the buttons with a, a deaf dog. Um, and if you DM me, I will try and find, um, the person's name and send it to you if someone hasn't already put it in the chat. <laughs> Okay, I probably have about 10 more minutes before either my phone dies or my food gets here from the DoorDasher. <laughs> so if anyone has some more questions, um, I'm happy to answer them. Yeah, if, if you're not following positive behaviors um, with Jasper the cat, who's bored, whose buttons have basically like a, a braille-like function, Run, run, don't walk. Oh, she's almost done with this thing. In fact, I think that's getting a little small. Oh, see, now she doesn't want to give it up because she knows I'm going to take it from her. <laughs> Parker. <laughs> she says it's my treasure. We just want to say thank you. Thank you, Sarah and William and Isaac and everyone. Um, thank you for initiating this for sure. All right. Well, I think we're going to go so that I can eat my dinner. <laughs> but I will save this and I will post it uh, to our YouTube. And I will uh, share the link to that in our stories once it's uploaded. Um, yeah. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Parker says bye. <laughs>